Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So welcome to our session today. It's about the collaboration across borders, um, the experience of workers' rights advocates in Myanmar and Cambodia. And before starting our session, let me introduce our uh, speaker today. And this is uh, Ms. Omsin Bunlert, and we can call her Bly. And she's an um, advocate. Um, she works as advocacy and also research officer for Mekong Migration Network. It is a sub-regional uh, network for the migrant support CSOs, NGOs, and also for research institute in uh, Greater Mekong sub-region. And for your information, like Greater Mekong sub-region includes the six countries for Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, Myanmar, Thailand, and also for Yunnan province in China. So they have been working in, like extensively in promoting for the rights of the, the migrants, uh, for the well-being, the dignity and human rights of the migrants, and also for promoting the, for the solidarity and collaboration between the migrants and advocates in the Greater Mekong sub-region. And um, Bly will talk and share with us today about the current situation of the garment workers in Myanmar and Cambodia, because like, um, well, we know the majority of the garment workers are the migrants themselves, domestically or cross borders. And then she can also share with us about their um, the efforts in promoting for the workers' rights in the region. So, um, so Ply, yeah, welcome um, and thank you for being here with us. And could you please um, and talk a little bit about the current situation of the garment workers in Myanmar and Cambodia? Because like uh, we also know that it is a very pressing issue that the government workers has been experienced the like, extremely bad living and working conditions. And I don't know, like, uh, you can give us more information and facts about the current situation in those two countries. Thank you, Ha, for your uh, introductions. And also, thank you for everyone to be here. And yeah, I, I hope today it will be not only me to share with you, but I also want to hear and learn from you too. And, but first of all, I just curious, I'm wondering, have you ever been to Southeast Asia? Yes? Okay. So, um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's quite hard if you, I mean, I've, I've been met some friends who never been to our regions and then it might be uh, a challenge for them to think about like what's going on there and then, so I want just, I just want to start with setting the context of where I'm coming from. So I'm, I'm talk today, I, I like to uh, share with you why we need to work with Cambodia and Myanmar. So for the for the garment industry in Cambodia, as you may know, is the big industry in the countries and also is the driven economy of the country. It's 20 years already. So that's happened long, long times ago. And then uh, now is Cambodia is become the ranking under the World Bank as the lower middle income country. It's meaning that Cambodia will not get benefits from any kind of uh, economic uh, like um, tax exemption or tariff from the EU or the US anymore. Then, but then go back to Myanmar. Myanmar just had election, right? And the country just opened less than a, a decade after the long terms of military rules. And the EU just leave the ban and the sanction in Myanmar in 2012, which is just recently. So then, but Myanmar uh, also, uh, but the very interestingly, the garment industry in Myanmar is growing up very, very fast. From, uh, I can tell you how fast this is. From the first, when they just start opening country, uh, the economy in the Burma, they uh, create the in the in the uh, export is grow seventy nine percent in the year twenty fourteen. So it's just only two years when they open, but then the foreign direct investment they are know that in in Myanmar is the minimum wage is very very low. And it just actually came into uh, force as the law recently in 2015. So can you guess how much is it for workers get paid per day in Myanmar? How low you think? 
per day, eight hours a day. How much? Yep. In maybe in US dollars? Yep. Ten US dollar? Okay. Wow. It's Thailand based. Uh, minimum wage. Okay. Then I think it's still high. Yep, it's still high. Anyone want to guess more? Yep. Three? Oh, how do you know that? Yes, exactly. It's three US dollar a day for workers um, in just recently can earn by law. I, just, I, I didn't mean it will be by practice. In reality, um, not all the workers, they earn three US dollar per day. Or even they earn, you know, um, the way they work is not by the working hours, but by the number of production needs by the employer. So meaning that you work, yes, you work eight hours a day, but you may need to uh, cut the, what they call the steam um, of the church for more than 3,000 pieces per day in order to get three US dollar. It's not counting like how many hours per piece, but it's more in the way that like, um, you know, it's like the whole payment that you, all the work that you have to do. Then that's happened in Myanmar recently. Then back to Cambodia, 20 years has passed. In Cambodia, um, the minimum wage slightly different is by monthly. And can you guess by monthly how much workers in government factory they earn? In US dollar, um, usually they work six day a week, uh, six day per week, and the calculations of their wages is from that six day per week and eight hours um, a day. Anyone want to guess per month how much do you think workers will earn by laws? I mean. Uh, I can tell you, it's, yeah, it's better than Burma, it's more than 100 US dollar, but it's just only this year, it's only uh, 143, I think. Because next, oh no, now it's the new law, it's happened, it's 153, but before it's 140s. But then, uh, this morning we are talking about living wage, right? And Asia floor wage in that 2013, they estimate, the, um, they calculate the living wage of the Cambodia is 283 US dollar per month. But the law said, the law provide, guarantee the wage for them is 153. That's um, things happen in, I mean, how the economic in the, uh, cam, how the government looking at the garment industry as the way to uh, grow, to make the country develop in this sense by looking at the cheap labors and to promote from outside, inviting all of the developed country, all the investor to come. You can think about the big brand instead of pay. How, how much minimum wage in Germany? Per hour? Okay, mm -hmm. and how much per hour? Eight euro fifty. fifty. How much yeah. in US dollar? It's like eleven. Like eleven? Okay. Yeah. Oh wow! It, eleven per hours? Even more than in the in our region where we consider as the high wages, minimum wage. Because for us, we need to work per day. But you work per hours, you can get that. And you can think about the business per, um, person. Why they are looking at the in that area? Yeah, that's just the setting the context. Like um, basically now you know how the the industry is going. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so like you also mean like of course like, for example like in Myanmar, Cambodia, and I think it's also in similar in other countries in the region as well. So like the cheap labor is really like a big target and also kind of like um, attraction for the government or the also the the government to use to attract more investors to come and also try also to um, improve the economic situation and development in the countries. And um, 
And could you also tell a little bit about, for example, the, the working conditions mm -hmm. and what are the, the challenges that the government workers are also facing instead of only like the very, very basic and low uh, minimum wage that we're talking about? Yeah, so, I mean, when you think about money, it seems like a very low and you may think, cannot Im um, try to imagine how, what kind of work they are doing in order to earn this very low wages. We're not talking about minimum uh, living wage at the moment because even the minimum yeah. wage they are not really earned. But yes, of course, we are promote and we are support for my grant, uh, for workers to earn the living wage. So for the working condition, uh, can you, you? I mean, the factory themselves is not a good place to stay, right? Because the airflow is not really um, well, and the air ventilation is will, is will be very bad. And when we are talking about the long working hours, it's not just you sit on the table and work in the long hours. It's not only that, but you can, can you imagine you work in the long king hours? You want to go to the toilet, but you cannot go. You, or you have to go, but you need to get a card from the, the, um, one of the leaders of the workers, but then they will not give it to you. So you have to stay there. And it's worse for the woman, I'm sorry, but during the time when you have a period and you, you have to sit there for 10 hours, you cannot go to the toilet to change your um, napkins and things like that. So that's, when we talk about long working hours, it doesn't mean just you just sit there. It's very long and make you feel so um, pain, your leg is so stiff. No, it's more than that. And then for the woman especially, when you sit that very long, and then it's, make you, uh, it's also linked to your reproductive health. It doesn't, when we talk about reproductive health, it doesn't mean um, only family planning, but it means you are, as a woman, you are not able to, um, you know, have the baby easily because of your working condition. It's not allow you to be healthy on that. That also the things, but I mean, many of time, many of the time, uh, when we when we talking about the working condition, we more focus on the working with the machine, you sewing, and then you get hurt by uh, physical injury. But at the same time, um, we are what my what workers more highlight and want to say one is the wages and one is the work um, longing hours because when it's longing hours so it create another issue I mean uh, a lot of problem to them so this thing uh, that I told you is not only happened in Myanmar at recently but it's happened it's also happened in Cambodia since 1990s and now it still happened so, and it's now also happened more in Myanmar. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's also the question. Why things not really change? Are we not really doing anything? Or any kind of the big issues that we are not really uh, aware of? Or what's, why um, this thing never changed? Many of you who are uh, involved in this movement, maybe, maybe familiar with the issue, yeah, we're talking about, you know, bad working condition, the air ventilation, the work, long working hours. But have you ever questions like, why? Why it still happen? And why is move from here to, uh, from, the, from the global north to the global south, from Asia to Africa, from one place to another? Yeah. Yeah, it is so true. Like uh, from what you said, I'm just thinking, for example, because like in Southeast Asia, we're talking about Myanmar as also kind of like um, a very hot spot for the development. Like we, like they can also really attract lots of um, development NGOs and also international NGOs and organizations to come. And it's following exactly the same development like models of mm -hmm. everywhere. So like what you are talking right now is like, it's, it already happened in Cambodia exactly the, the same like 10 years ago and now just repeated. So I'm just thinking it's like 
the cycle and where, like, and how we can really get out of it, right? And um, okay, and and also because, as far as I know, that Mikko Migration Network has been very active in facilitating different like a strategy, mm -hmm. um, and also for policy changes, and also trying to connect also for and also building trust among the, also the migrants, workers, and also for um, with the advocates. And could you please tell us more about the roles of the Mikko Migration Network in improving the the situation? Yeah, because as you, as I told you before, that in Myanmar mm -hmm. now the 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 even the government themselves they also kind of like a promote to the investor that no worry we have plenty of laborers we have a lot mm -hmm. of them and then you don't need to pay a lot we you know you need to just pay minimum wage is fine and then you also can earn more in the in the industry then. Um, Back to Cambodia government, they said, oh my god, now we are launching into the lower middle income country, so we cannot use the same tactic that we used to, in, um, to convince the investor. So they, they try, but then what they're trying to do in the first time is that just to keep workers as low wage as possible. So in, in this case, so meaning that the investor can choose where to go, so they can rest to the bottom. They can rest to the place where they can get benefits, right? And when the when the two countries competing each other, whose benefits? The investors benefits, right? Workers not benefits at all. So that's why what we are thinking is that we believe that if the country like Cambodia or Myanmar, who uh, is the main country where produce all these product, they collaborate among each other and go to negotiate with the investor. It means um, the, the people will get benefits from that instead of let the, the, the two countries competing each other and mm -hmm. kind of like a promote the cheap labor coming, coming, we are cheap, we have a lot of labor for you. So that's why we are come up with the idea of um, building the collaboration between CSO in Cambodia and in Myanmar to meet each other, to share each other, and to uh, work together in terms of finding the good strategy to um, advocate for the, the government, to aware of worker rights, and also at the same time to work with the workers to kind of like um, uh, empowering them in in both sides. And mm -hmm. one time, you know, it's very interesting, uh, in Asia, in, in ASEAN, we have the platform called ASEAN's People Forum, where the civil society in 10 ASEAN countries get together. And we also organize uh, several workshops in, in several uh, issues. Then one, we, for MMN, we organize a workshop uh, talking about the, um, we call uh, bottom of ASEAN. It's because ASEAN is 10 countries, it's five countries is, uh, uh, in our region is identified as CMLV the least development countries in the ASEAN. So they need to build up our development. Then we bring our friends from Cambodia to Myanmar at that time and ask them to share what's happened inside Cambodia. And surprisingly, all the friends in Myanmar, they said, oh no, it should not happen like that because it's happened here in Myanmar. But you are opened your country before us. Why it still happen like that? And yeah, and after that, they're aware of that, oh, the foreign direct in the foreign the investor they go everywhere where they can benefit, and after that they they kind of like uh, see that oh we cannot uh, just uh, separate our work but we need to um, share more and have the collaborate um, between mm -hmm. the two countries and now we also from from that start we bring our civil society from Cambodia to Myanmar and let them um. Allow, kind of like facilitate the forum for them to talking with the friends in Myanmar and sharing experience. And we bring friends from Myanmar to see the condition in Cambodia, to get them understand what we are talking about. And many of them said, I can't believe this happened. But it's really, really, really the same, because they thought that Cambodia may be different from us and better than us. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, like from what you said, like um, we always I think, uh, of course, like collaboration or cooperation is better than mm. competition, right? But we also understand like um, benefits speaks louder. 
and that's where like the investors are really like targeting and so I'm just considering like a from the network that mm -hmm. you have been building, like, is there any challenges that you face, or like, what is the biggest challenges when you try to connect people from like different networks together? Yeah, it's a lot of challenge, but it's also interesting challenge mm -hmm. because I would say that even though we are from Southeast Asian, but we are different. Mm -hmm. We are in the different context. So uh, in in Cambodia, our friends will be able to exercise their uh, civil rights through the election, or they can form the unions, and even though the unions also face the threat from the business and the government, but in Myanmar it's different because people have a long, long term living in fear of the military power. And the way they struggle is um, more underground. But in order to bring everything on the table, and we have to discuss, we have to make sure this thing is benefits all. That's the most challenge. But then we, but that challenge also the good challenge because our friends in Cambodia they experienced that before. When when the development just start in Cambodia, that's also happened um, recently in Myanmar. So they have a chance to exchange their issues mm -hmm. so but the, the the thing is that when we're talking about solidarity across the border we are not looking at only one uh, aspect or one issues but we try to make mm -hmm. it fit into their own context in Cambodia they um, they demand for the union rights or the better um, wages mm -hmm. but in, in Myanmar they just start talking about better working condition mm. or some kind of in Cambodia you're talking about ac better access to healthcare services for workers in the factory mm. in Myanmar just talking about create the social security system in the country so I mean the issue why is we'll be not go along in the uh, in the same lines but we try to support each other and let them share mm. and we have we always try our best to bring friends from Cambodia and Myanmar to meet each other and yeah, make sure that they have a chance to exchange information and strategies. Mm. Yeah. So that means like uh, trying to make like the, the agenda that benefits for all will be like a very challenging in, in this sense, right? And yeah. like uh, for example, like uh, from the strategy and also like law enforcement, like um, how has it been going with Mekong Migration Network? Is there any like, uh, because you also organize many different dialogue exchange and I'm not so sure like um, what kind of support you get from the government in two countries or any challenges in in those two countries then? Yeah, actually, um, I'm talking about the government. It doesn't mean I'm have a, I'm the good friends with them. They are not really, mm. um, yeah, want to see me that much, <laughs> but I mean, we we try our best to uh, open the the for the platform and inviting them to come. So, like for example, in the next few days, we organize a policy dialogues in Yangkung, Myanmar. We invited the representative of the government to read to whatever they do. I mean, we ask them to come and listen to our recommendation and. Yeah, ask them to respond on that. And the good, you know, what the strategy we use to deal with the government is the power of the media. We mm. inviting media to our policy dialogue. When we present our recommendation to them, we ask mm. them to respond, and they respond in front of the media. So meaning that public know what's going on, what is in the discussions. That mm. what we need the public to know and understand the issues. So that even though. Later on, they just like uh, ignore what they has been said, but we can use other uh, strategy to following up with that. But it doesn't mean I would say that it's not all the media is also friendly for workers because I mean everything have both sides. So we need to work hard to uh, get media understand our side too. We have not only advocate to the government, we then we also advocate to the media too. Okay, thank you so much. So I think now we also can open floors for the, the audience. So if you have any questions or any comments or feedback, please feel free.
or any things that you also want more clarities or want to get more information like we also open for anything at the moment mostly it's more like at the free market and also now actually Germany is also the big investor in Myanmar. They're looking at the Myanmar. I mean, I, I just checked the numbers last night. It's quite a big number in among the EU countries in here. Uh, I mean, in, in Myanmar. So, and like I said, Cambodia is also the, uh, the, the big exported market is EU. And now when the Lengjing is up, the EU, they cannot access to, to um, EU as before. We, now but then as i said the the in myanmar the um labor market is also make the investor think that they can get benefits more so that's a free market that make um this thing happen but at the same time one thing that uh not only the not only in terms of the market themselves that uh create this um, situation but also in they are not looking at only the country where they get cheap labor but they also what in our observations many of the time in the free market where the place that lack of labor rights protection so that's the way they are looking for now in Cambodia there are also a lot of good laws but we are not talking about the implementation no? because um, I mean that's also the gap in Southeast Asia. When we have a very beautiful laws, but in terms of implementation, there's still a lot of gaps. But in in Myanmar, it's nothing. Even the laws and every I mean protection labor protection law is also not there. I mean what what I'm trying to say is that like uh, yeah the yes the investor they work internationally they just um, getting to the market where they can access. But at the same time, what we are trying to do that. In the national level, where the investor they try to go, we build all, um, the cross border first because this is the place where they are looking for, and like it's happened everywhere. You know, you go to the place where you get benefits. Yeah, the the most challenge for the workers in 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 our area is still yes the freedom of expressions and uh, also the right to be union, because many of the times the. Uh, yeah, the the money speak louder, like you said. So, in for example, you will have been know that um, in 2015 in Cambodia, when the workers strike, right, instead of the government should provide assistance and support to the workers, they support the investor, and they send the milita militant to to the strike and they stop the workers. So. Um, yeah, the freedom of expressions and also the the freedoms of um, unionize in the country is also still the big challenge for us. And so I think, but on the other hand, in the in the international level, I think in the accountability of the the investor is also important. I mean, we can call them to not only responsible of the of their supply chain but also we can call for accountability they, we can call for them because many of the time workers in my in 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 the back home they don't even know the the company that they are working for they never know that this is um the this part of gaps or this is a part of h and m this is a part of um, any brands and they don't really know so but then we can as the as the international level and also the the I believe in the power of the customer to call for the accountability of the the investor and the company to show up, um the uh in terms of the supply chains to clearly explain like who the, um who is of their supply chains so that we can keep monitoring of the system and and, and we can also call. I mean, we used to do in the in a way that uh, calling them to for the accountability to explain about their supply chain, and then when it's happened in one of the factory, we can also trace back to the band, and then we can demand for improvement. So that's I think. I mean, from far away, I mean from the bigger levels, that's the way we we can do, and we uh, want the support in terms of calling for accountability of the uh, investment in the in our region yeah <laughs>
Oh yeah. No more question. In Cambodia, I guess it's a very different in Myanmar. Most of the trade units or weapon units they actually not independent working, but rather controlled or manipulated by the government or even manipulated um, by the companies that people look at the right? So as an NGO, how can you uh, like figure out how to support the right trade unions or working units? And what is your basic idea about this? How can you support the independent working working units? Well, uh, thank you. So, uh, we, uh, like, what what we are trying to do is that yes, um, the trade union have uh, difference. So, uh, some of them, many of them, may more uh, linking with the employers or not really independent. But it doesn't mean uh, is we cannot work with them. So for us, I mean, we bring everyone in the same platform and let to have the dialogue. And then for those who are who are not open, we even the government we used to organize the workshop to train them to have them understanding and get the information. And we try to uh, yeah. Usually we we provide a space to bring them because I mean for the independent one they may not understand why for the one who are embedded with the the, the employers they cannot work so I mean when we bring people together they start this card they start talking so that they can and can see the con the conditions of each other so we are not really kind of like choosing the right one but we try to bring everyone on board and then get them understand and try to have a dialogue. Yeah, usually our work is more like a open platform and then let them have a dialogue. And then after that is their, I mean, up to their um, decision making because they, they should have the free freedom of um, movement on their own too. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so I think if we, if there is no other questions or comments from the audience, so I can, let's call it like, the close this session here. So thank you so much for your um, participation and also contribution. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we have the website, it's called yeah. mekongmigrationnetwork.org. So basically my work is working with the cross-border migration, but we also ask the, the migration in our region more on the economic migration. Mm -hmm. We're also working on worker rights. So please feel free to visit our website. We, yeah, we have the, a lot of publications and also yeah. some kind of the uh, media, uh, multimedia for you to get better ideas of what's yeah. going on in the region. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.